So y'all, I have been shaving my face. My Today, I'm going to be getting ready. I have a new wig from My First Wigs. So what I'm basically going to be doing today is installing it and let y'all know what's been going on. So if you're interested, please continue to watch and let's jump into it. Now this unit is about a, I want to say a 14 inch with highlights in the wig or like an ombre kind of feel to it. I went ahead and bleached the knots yesterday like I mentioned before and I'm glad that I did that. At first I was going to tell you guys that you really didn't need to bleach the knots. You can barely see the knots but they were still dark too dark for me or for my liking when I am applying a lace front wig. And then I use my Sephora Micro Smooth Powder in circular motions. Sometimes if you pat, you can have a lot of um, fallout. But another thing about this unit, this is considered, I wanna say, not HD lace, but together. It's called Swiss lace, Swiss lace. But what I was trying to tell y'all before, they put a lot of volume in short wigs. But I don't like when my wigs look super bulky while they're short. And I find that if you wet it, you know, that density kind of calms down and you can kind of work with whichever style you want to go with a lot easier. But y'all know the deal. I'm going to be using these two hairsprays. This is my Got To Be Glue and this is my Salon Graphics Tim Max Holding Spray. Guys, I went to the nail salon the other day, well yesterday, I, and I was so happy that they turned out exactly how I wanted them. I stuck with the basic ballerina pink, if y'all were interested in the color. And you just want to make sure you don't have any of your little hairs up under your lace, because that's just not cute at all. And if you find like you have some parts lifting up, Use anything flat that you have and put a little bit of hairspray on it and press at that area. I like using these eyebrow razors. Um, they have like a really flat tail. I'm gonna get some of this off up here and I'm gonna focus. This is how I look when I receive the wig, okay? And as you can see, you see all that volume up there? You see how it can be like, so what can I do other than just straighten it? Well, no, we just not gonna be that basic about it today. I am gonna section it off and do some curls, but I think this is a half inch curling iron from Connie Air. I got mine from Walgreens, it's super old. As you can see, my little thing is off of it, but I'm still a warrior and I'm still able to curl my hair with it. So I'm gonna put some pin curls in the hair and hopefully it turns out how I want it to look. skin with the cucumber water from wet and wild the three in one prime set and refresh wet and wild hello halo luster drops put it on the high points of my face now that we have the glow on I'm going this way concealer next it just depends on how i'm feeling to be honest with you but since i want my coverage today i'm gonna go in with the concealer first 
go in with my nude stick. I still am using this product. I actually dropped it today and it has like a huge dent in it, but it's all good. We're gonna make it do what it do. And I have left this product open so it can get stiffer. So as you can see, I used this in um, my last tutorial and or my last get ready with me. It was so easy to blend to the point that it was like kind of like leaving my damn skin. So I just left it open, not so easy to blend out. And I'm just using my Morphe 439 brush that I use for my foundation. And whatever is left over, I'm just applying it to the forehead. And of course, you are going to set your contours after we finish blending out everything. So once again, this is the Nude Sticks in the shade Deep 10. And I picked mine up from Ulta, but you can actually find it in Sephora as well. I think it depends on what Sephora you go to. I'm gonna move on to blending. Blend this area first. Clean up your contour if need be. Miss my face with the Continuous Setting Spray. And this is from Morphe. I'm gonna be taking my NARS Radiant Longwear Foundation. You already know this is my favorite foundation. Pump that on the back of my hand and then I'm going to stipple this on the bottom half of my face. And I'm gonna pick up a closer mirror so everything is well blended. So y'all, I have been shaving my face, my whole entire face, basically like Dermaplan or um, Y'all know what I'm trying to say. I don't know if it's called Dermaplan. But let me know if you see a huge difference when you shave your face, if you do shave your face. I know a lot of people um, get scared. Um, I find that I don't break out as much and I also have a really smooth application. But I think I'd rather do like laser hair removal on my face before I'm actually just shaving my damn face with a razor. That's just a little bit too much. I use an eyebrow razor, but still, it's still like, I'm, first of all, my hair grows back too fast for me to be doing that all the time. But um, I just want to know if y'all see a difference in your makeup, because I know I do. So as you can see, I'm kind of like using the brush to blend out the bottom half of my concealer so there's no harsh lines. It's my first time really doing that, but it's not that bad. I actually like it. And then just use your beauty blender to blend out the rest. Because I'm going out running errands, I'm not gonna be doing like a super crazy eye look. Okay, so that's just that on that. And y'all know, my girl Laura, we're gonna set with her. And I need to actually go and pick me up another one. And you know what I also need to go pick me up? I actually want to go into MAC and get me that highlighter pen that I used to use all the time back in like 2015. And I feel like it's a little bit more softer than using concealer anyway. So I love that pen. I just always forget to pick it up. But um, I'm going to get that one today if I remember because I'm always forgetting. I need to go and put that on the pad to go ahead to um, Mac. But since I'm supposed to be going to, um, but since I'm supposed to be going to Zara anyway, I'll be able to remember. Don't do that because I'm supposed to be taking photos. I was gonna see if I wanted to use another powder today, but we're gonna keep it with what I know works for my skin type. So. Hold Okay, so I'm gonna use my Laura Mercier Candle Glow Powder, and I'm gonna use the same sponge I used to set my under eye and place this on. My last video, I asked you guys to give me some new setting powders y'all been using for y'all whole entire face. Um, I guess you would consider them foundation powders, but uh, I need a new one. I told y'all I'm about to go back to MAC because for some reason their powders don't be breaking me out. But their foundation, like their liquid foundations, that actually breaks me out.
Okay, so as you can see, a little bit goes a long way. You don't need a lot. I always say that I'd rather do reverse contour before I touch a little bit of powder down here. But this brush does get a little crazy and this powder does get a little crazy. So I think I'm going to pick up a new brush because I don't really like that one for this. And, and I think I will have a little bit more control with this powder. It does have a lot of kickback, so do be careful if you choose to use this. So I'm going to take a little bit of it, and I do mean a little bit, tap off the extraness. And I'm going to hit the size of my nose. And I try to follow the natural contour of my nose. Nose contour can be very, um, like a huge commitment, especially if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> try to have a light hand and try to follow the natural, like hollows of your nose and work with that before you're actually trying to create like a whole new entire nose. Today I didn't use that cream on my nose because I find that it's very unnecessary, especially if I have like a really pigmented powder like this. I don't think it's necessary. This, and then just touch the sides up a little bit just so you can clean that area. I'm gonna use the Candle Glow from Laura. I'm in the shade five and I'm just going to place this in the transition area and I am going to use the bronzer for the base or the crease. Well, the crease and the base. But different brushes just adds a little bit of intensity and then other brushes just give you that blown out feel. And I'm just gonna use this just to set all over my lid so I don't crease throughout the day. Just to tone it down a little bit and blend it out like so. take the glow powder again or the glow bronzer and this brush has a more tapered feel to it and it's a 412 from morphe you can build the intensity where you want it and then you can just pack it on your lids with a flat brush and that's what i've been doing lately to get this really easy brown smoky eye. Everyday version though. 408 from Morphe. And I'm gonna use this to kind of like tight line so I can have a little bit more control of how intense this bronzer gets underneath my eyes because I don't want it to be too. I go crazy with this when it's nighttime, but for the sake of the sun, we're gonna tone it down. Blend that out just ever so slightly. Just a little bit of blush. I'm gonna mix raisin and a little bit of this NYX together with the same brush that I applied the bronzer. And then we can press this powder in and do some buffing motion so everything is blended. I use the uh, nude sticks to actually outline my lip. There. Took a bit of Kingston from MAC, the lip brush from Morphe. And I'm gonna take a little bit of um, Flower Crown from Morphe. this Becca Glow Gloss just to add the shine. The center, and this is in the shade Opal. So I have been using my brow pencil for my waterline. I'm gonna do that, but in the meantime, in the between time, I'm gonna pop my lashes on. Let me take a thumbnail. Maybe, maybe I should use my phone for my thumbnail. Hold on, y'all. Let's close up some stuff. Open up this damn container so you're, you don't lose these things because they're so easy to lose. They're so annoying. You're just going to want to throw them away. But I'm telling you, if you just keep the box that they come in 
it's going to save you a lot of money because you don't understand how much money I spent on these damn clips before in my lifetime. We're going to take this down. Try to be gentle so you don't have a lot of flyaways, but I should be telling myself that because I'm so heavy handed. It's a nice day outside. I'm gonna go get me some bubble tea. I've been obsessed with bubble tea to the point that I think I'm gonna start making my own because I'm not about to keep driving far out just to get some damn bubble tea. But my favorite is honeydew melon. If y'all ever try it, try honeydew melon with the tapioca balls at the bottom. So good. I wanna do like a foodie video where I'm just trying a whole bunch of bubble tea because they get real creative really creative there's always going to be some pieces that you're probably going to have to touch up so don't be mad at yourself or don't be mad at me <laughs> but um the kind of feel that i was going for for today's look is what i wanted to do with some other hair in another tutorial but that hair is going to turn out so fire just because of the color um this is going to turn out cute too but I just wanted to try it out on like this hair first since I don't have to work with a lot of hair. The only reason why I say it's going to be so much, such a huge difference on the hair that I'm talking about is because the hair comes naturally curly anyway. And it's a kinky curly. So working with kinky curly hair and doing like pin curls on it because it already has its natural um, curl pattern in the hair is just going to make the hair really big and bouncy and pretty. So as you can see, all of the pins are out. So you can wear it like this, like, you know, a natural girl hair type of vibe. Use your like pick to comb it out. Um, I do have like a, a pick type of comb, but I don't know. Obviously I don't want to wear it like this, but I do want to take a thumbnail like this just so I can be a little bit more appealing to the eyes. Those combs that I was going to either use, what? I got all kind of makeup all over me. So it's either between this one or this one. I don't know if I want to use this one. I don't know if I want to use this one. I think I'm gonna use this one. This one is just too sharp at the ends. This, these ends have a little bit more roundness to it. See, the other comb would have had just broke straight through. And I didn't have time for that. Not after curling all of this, honey, I did it. So the hair that, I'm, that I was talking about, um, it'll probably end up looking just like this, but it's just way more hair. And another thing, I dyed that hair the um, same color as the top half of this. So, yeah. So this is basically what I was going for. Something um, big, voluptuous, and not so like the hair being so straight, if that makes sense. And I love looks like this where I can actually control the style and it doesn't come like a, in a synthetica because synthetica's go for shit like these. They, this is like the favorite thing to do when you got a synthetica wig. And obviously this is human hair. You can play with it, you can manipulate it. You can comb it out even more. Um, you can leave it like this. It's definitely your personal preference. But this is basically what I'm doing for today. And I do love how it turned out. This is a plus for me because if you have trouble with storing your wigs, you could just store them in the same bags that you get them in. But a lot of the wig companies don't supply um, wig bags. You keep a couple of wigs in here if you want to, girl. Um, stuff it, zip it up, just don't break it. And let me quickly go over. So the inch on this is a 14 inch. I don't know if I said 14 or not, but I believe I did. Um, this is a silky texture. So as you can see, when I blew it out, it was really straight. I didn't have to do much to it. Even if I was to straighten it, I wouldn't go for a bone straight moment. I would probably like curl it a little bit, like a slight curl with like a one and a half, two inch curling iron. And then I will like, 
you know use that to kind of straighten my hair if that makes sense because I don't like super flat straight hair unless I'm going for that look and um this is the 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 color is the same as the picture so it's the number two and a number five mix the circumference of this wig is 21.522 22, so it fits really snug on me because my circumference is a 22 and I love when a wig is fitting snug anyway so it does fit really really good and this is a lace front wig it does have Swiss lace I knew it because I could just tell what Swiss is nowadays and the lace color is a medium brown it comes with these stocking caps right here the one that I, that I have one I actually like that one way more than this but I can I can deal with these I'll say that I like these more than like the beige ones that they'll try to give you or like the light brown ones these are like a pinkish nude but more nude they have like a pink nude but this is a more nude-ish kind of pink if that makes sense so you get these wig caps and you do get this little bag that I was telling you guys where it makes your life so much easier when applying your wigs amazing they come with these dugbill clips that I find are super helpful when you're styling your hair I could have used that use these they um, work really really well keep a keep them close to you because the girls sometimes like to snatch these and run off with them because they're so good it comes with a really bomb comb it comes in handy I have like every comb that they've sent me still to this day because they really do come in handy because it's because it is a rat tail and then they sent me some bobby pins Doug bill clips are a little bit easier to like um reach and put and pin on your hair. You have this flyaway tamer, but as you can see today, I'm not going to need this bad boy. You don't have to be too skeptical about this company because their quality is matching their price points, okay? Their price points are a little high, but the quality matches it. And if you want a wig that you're gonna be able to have for years, and I do mean years because I've had wigs from this company for, Ooh, I want to say some years, girl, and they still was looking really, really good. I gave a lot of them away, getting better at their knots, so that shows you that they're investing their money back into their company. Pre-bleached, pre-dyed hair, still going to have great quality. They have really good blonde units on their site, too. I'm going to spritz my hair with a little bit of hairspray, and that's because I want this to last when I go outside, and it is a bit windy, so... I only use this hairspray on my weave. So let me figure out what I'm wearing and what I came up with. I'm sure y'all are gonna say y'all love the other initial style. What ended up happening was I curled the opposite way the second time I curled the hair. So I, I wasn't paying attention, but it's all good. It's golden hour. I gotta go and take my photos. Everything that I mentioned in this video will be linked in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you like this style or the last style. This obviously is a bit more wearable because the hair isn't so much in your face, but but, you know a lot of people don't really care about their hair being in the face when it's in a style like that but to each his own let me know what you guys like better love you guys i'll see you in my next one don't forget to thumbs up comment subscribe and turn on your post notifications bye y'all